<laughs> I'm in my life. <laughs> You know, the vibe so this place isn't core. enough gambling core. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my hero? Yeah. We're ready to play some right. slots. True. Oh no. Aw, oh, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you land? Hey kid, the house always wins. Yeah. <laughs> Man, now I just want to play Fall of New Vegas again. <laughs> All right, but instead we're going to be playing Super Smash Brothers here as we get into winner's finals. Fawn versus John. John now with a bit of a uh, percent lead, but getting put off stage by Fawn. Okay, and right now John going off stage, trying to get a spike. <laughs> Yo, easy does it. Yeah, Fawn unfortunately air dodging into the ledge, didn't grab it, put her in a terrible position. All right, and I do also want to point out our uh, choice of stage. I mean, Small Battlefield is kind of the John Numbers starter of choice, but I think this is also, like, one of Fawn's better stages for Duck Hunt. I think the Small Battlefield is just fantastic for her to set up these lanes of ledge trapping. I thought you were going to make a commentary on the music. It's been I a while mean, since I've heard Pit Crusher from Tekken 3. It's a, it's, a, it's a good song. It's a deep cut, for sure. Uh-oh. John air dodging in preparation for the can. Is that neutral get up? coming. Oh, that little crawl into the grab. So sneaky from Fawn. I like when Fawn does that. She's actually had a very few good moments, like against Ryzekin, uh the other like week, where she just like walked up to the ledge mm -hmm. and just forward tilted. I want to see more of that, because she does tend to like dash dance around the stage and isn't really walking with the dog. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to walk the dog. Sometimes the dog just walks itself. I mean, I think walking in general is just such an underrated movement tool in Smash, just because of how low committal it is, especially if you've got a character with a good crawl. Yes, but it is hard when your opponent has such a good dash attack like mm -hmm. John that can pretty much just outpace any sort of walk speed. But right now in the air, John taking a lot of damage. More damage! Oh, the can is coming! Waits out the air dodge and finds a stock for it? John's eyes going as wide as those clay setup. pigeons. All right, well, we do have deep breathing. We have the whole sun charged. <laughs> the band is going crazy right now. This is what we call a uh, solo moment. All right, John finding himself back on solid ground, racking up this damage against Vaughn. Okay, gunman. Oh my god, nice that crouch the under the sheriff! Okay, she needs to recover high. Okay, great cancel. Yeah, and great free fall as well. Not gonna be it. <clears throat> Dog has been hitting those treats too hard. The can is coming through, it's coming to hell! Woo! Alright, the band was very happy for a preview there, being like, ah, oh, the game's going on too long. Improvise, boys. Yeah, I think actually very unfortunate for Fawn that she pulled the Sombrero Bandito because it does have the shortest range. It just wasn't a threat to John at that range. Like, see right there? Yeah, he doesn't have to worry about stopping Sun Sal. Yeah, that was just some bad RNG there. So, no Battlefield, no Smashville. Where are we going? Mm, let's see. We are seeing the same characters. Just right back into Small Battlefield. I, I agree. I think for Fawn Duck Hunt, I think this is definitely one of her better options. I mean, look, Hall of Bastion is right there. True. Okay, she's playing a lot more squirrely here, setting up underneath the platform. But so is John here, just charging up the sun, deep breathing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of a trait that you have to take. You know, Fawn does get to set up that stage presence, those obstacle courses that I'm always talking about. But, John, if you give John an inch, he gets so many resources. He gets to charge Sun Sal, he gets to get deep breathing, and how plus he gets to poke you with the soccer balls. How many city blocks does he get? How many city blocks? Someone asked me today, I said, hey, I'm kind of sore for running four miles, and they said, how long is four miles? And I looked at him dead in the eye, I'm like, four miles. Four miles? He's like, no, city blocks. I'm like, who measures in city blocks? Like... <laughs> I don't know! That's so, that's 20, so... 20 blocks is a mile. Oh my god! All right. That's a true New Yorker right there. Yeah, that's like super common knowledge. 
Manhattan is two miles wide, so it's like it's a little bit hard to do, decipher avenues. But city blocks, twenty of them equal a mile. Okay. Roughly. Today well, I learned. Now I can say eighty city blocks. <laughs> yeah, you can say eighty blocks. Yeah, absolutely. But right now, Fawn doing really well this first stock. John is still at one thirty-seven. Still lots of rage. Ooh, the oh, the sombrero finally coming through. Yeah, definitely very scary for John as the sombrero bandito does have the highest knockback, so might be in kill percentage soon. All right, setting up the can at a weird angle, but has to abandon it there at the ledge. Fawn now trying to just run away, find some space. He can't run forever though. John is coming. Oh, but so He's is a Terminator. The can. 184. Somebody up there must really like John. Yeah, for they're not going to be doing it. Not quite in position with the can. Sombrero Bandito gets caught, but there we go. The can forcing an untaggable situation for John. Finally at 209, though. What the? That man was still tacking at 169 last game. Guacamayrari not taking the opportunity to count her blessings, though. Air dodging right back. All right, separating John from the soccer ball, removing that resource just for that little bit of time. Bond trying to feint some approaches here, putting the can now at the top platform, just removing that lane from John's, uh, you know, mobility. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just Good had to challenge that. Lord. All right now, Can is at ledge. John can't do a neutral get up, instead, but gets blown up there from the nice little forward tilt there. Yeah, Fawn with a pretty impressive lead here, 87% to nil. You can't think about that. You just got to think about it interaction to interaction, especially against John. You can always turn the tide in the blink of an eye. Yeah, especially with deep breathing online, two moves, 61 damage. Ooh. That's the power of deep breathing. Did you see that little stutter step up smash? Mm hmm. Fawn was like, I don't want to go anywhere near that. I just want to say, uh, Fawn got hit by like three or four moves, and she was at 94. Yeah. Yeah, That you see, <laughs> that's what I mean. Oh no, at Toucan! Toucan, Still. where? <laughs> I just see a dog and a duck. All right, the Sheriff not taking it though, but putting John numbers, forcing the high recovery. A good idea trying to go for that lag after the deep breathing. All right, oh, still gets jab checked. On. Yeah, didn't hold on for the full jab. No, I wasn't expecting John to do the whole one. Uh-oh. All right, John removing the can from play, making sure that Fawn has no resources to get back. Removing the dog and duck from play, too. <laughs> John now one stock away from finding himself in Winterside Grands. We're going to see if Fawn has anything to say about it, as she's had some fantastic momentum this game, too. I know what she'd say. She'd say no. <laughs> Damn. All right, just trying to get any sort of disjoint here, any sort of tipper, yeah, and still jumps, still falls into it. She can't land. Yeah, the game has just been kind of slipping from their fingers as they're finding themselves taxed by their own can, just taking so much chip damage, and you cannot be giving any sort of chip damage to John Numbers. Ooh, oh, yeah. that was on purpose. <laughs> that was personal. John uses the can against Fawn, and he's going on the grands. It's all right. Fawn still has an opportunity there on the loser side, but she's taking a big sigh and preparing herself mm -hmm. for the run of the day. There's still some really good moments here. I think when Fawn was forcing for John to approach, that's when she was in the driver's seat. And even though John was starting to get through that obstacle course, you know, jumping, no, <coughs> kind of like dodging through the clay pigeon and jumping over the cowboys, I think that's when we started to see Fawn being like, okay, maybe I need to start approaching. And that's where things fell apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just not quite able to stick to the game plan, unfortunately. And then it was just unfortunate that now she was in the air and making all the wrong decisions to land. It's like, okay, at that point, that's not really your fault. That's just, I'm in the air against John Numbers. Mm -hmm. But next up... We